Millennials today are buying less cars than the previous generation. They're delaying everything in their lives in comparison to the previous generation, in fact. There are many reasons why this could be, but one is certainly necessary to discuss. Debt. The sheer amount of debt is becoming unpayable. This will cause massive disruptions to many industries, and most aren't even aware. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today I want to talk about something interesting. I saw this article related to millennials and their purchases of cars and their vehicles that led me down a rabbit hole. I'm going to show you some of the topic of debt and how it relates to this because I think that is integral to this point. So let's begin by taking a look at this article out of the Wall Street Journal. Driving? The kids are so over it. If teenagers are any guide, Americans' love affair with the automobile may no longer be something car makers can bank on. I understand there are two major disruptors that are coming here in the near future as it relates to the automobile industry. We have the younger generation, which seems to not have any interest in purchasing a vehicle. They're purchasing less of them, as well as delaying getting their driver's license, which is a second point that indicates this. You also have the rise of services that we'll discuss in a moment, like Uber, for example. This is a big change, and that is very negative to the industry in general. The percentage of teens with a driver's license has tumbled in the last few decades and more young people are delaying purchasing their first car, if buying one at all. About a quarter of 16-year-olds had a driver's license in 2017. That's a sharp decline from nearly half in 1983. Obviously, this represents a lot of individuals that are delaying it. Now, there could be multiple reasons for it. This could be something that is exacerbated into the future. What I like to look at is something that we can be definitive about, and that's the amount of debt that young people are in today, and in fact, everybody is in today. They talk about the ride hailing services. They also talk about having cities that have mass transit systems. You don't necessarily need a car and so on. But the fact that cars are so ridiculously expensive in this paragraph here is something that should not be taken lightly. When you look at this information here, breaking it all down, it starts to make some sense. Individuals previously would love to get their first car. They'd love to be driving around the freedom that it provides but you have to get your insurance you have to get your gasoline you got to pay the payments on the vehicle people today on average in the United States take eight years eight years on average that's not a high number not a low number that's the average to pay off their vehicle this is incredible now of course that represents a new vehicle but if you look at this no matter where you see the stats from it shows you that we've got a problem on our hands today and there is a underlying cause of it, it's debt. So that's part of the Wall Street Journal article, but I want to show you some other information today. Here is a chart associated with that, cooling on cars. The youngest drivers are more likely to buy used vehicles than older generations which you can see in the top left corner. On the right hand side, they're just showing you how over the years, less individuals that are young are getting their license. And that's not a good thing for the automobile manufacturers because they have to rely on more people to come in and purchase them, particularly when individuals are letting their payments stretch over an eight year period. When you have these services, which technically are very new, Lyft and Uber and others out there, this provides individuals a method of getting from point A to point B. They can use their phones. They're so comfortable using these phones, these devices. They can get a ride to them. They can be delivered wherever they need to. They don't have the responsibility. They don't need to worry about the payments on their vehicle. They don't have to worry about all the other things that are associated with ownership. They could just it for the moment. That's why a lot of people are doing this today. They feel it's better. You've even seen somebody like Kevin O'Leary come out and suggest that this is what you should do if you live in a place where it makes sense financially. For a lot of people, it probably does. It's besides the point, really. It depends on what we are seeing with that particular individual and their instance. When you see them being buried under debt, you have a problem. They can see themselves paying $20 to get from point 
point A to point B, but can't see themselves paying two, three, four hundred dollars for a car payment, for the gas, for the maintenance, and so on in a monthly span. So they decide that they won't do it. They'll take their mass transit and then they'll take a Uber or a Lyft when they need to. So this is what's really changing. It didn't exist before. Yes, you had taxi cabs, but this is becoming more and more prevalent today, especially because you can just call them up from your phone and the technology is there. Individuals that are young are so comfortable with it and so on. And then you have something which is kind of in between. You may have this in your city or something similar. This happens to be car to go, but there are other services out there. You use your phone, it has an app. You go in, you can unlock the vehicle that are parked in different parking lots around the city. You go, you use the car, you park it wherever you need to. Some of these businesses, you have to park it in one of their parking lots. Regardless, you could then lock the car up using the app on the phone. That's it, it charges you for the distance you traveled or for the t based on time and that's all. This is providing people with their own physical car, but it's basically a rental, a very short-term rental for the most part. This is allowing individuals who might need a car one day a week or one day a month. They don't have to buy the vehicle. So this is really changing the system as well. No longer does an individual need to own that vehicle. They have other options. So I see this really being disruptive. Now look at this, millennial student debt, a roadblock to milestones. According to the National Association of Realtors, median student debt balance $41,000, their median income $38,000. And you can see the different numbers that they've put on here, 55% postponed having children, 41% delayed marriage, seven year expected delay in the purchase of their first home. Obviously, people who have excessive amounts of debt have to delay everything. That's a big ticket item. They could definitely buy something for $20 here, $20 there. There. They can buy what they need, but when it comes to the big ticket items, they wait, they postpone it, and the statistics are there to prove it. Now, you might say that it's culturally different and times are changing, but I have to look at the statistics, and this is what we have in front of us. Changing life progressions for today's Americans. You could see on here, Americans are getting married five years later than they did in the 1970s. There are nine times as many first time mothers over the age of 35 than in 1970. They're calling it the great delay. So those are just some more stats for you there. Looking at this, in 2019, Americans are more burdened by student loan debt than ever before. You've seen the stats yourself. Obviously, the amount increases every single year. It doesn't ever decrease. During the financial crisis, it didn't decrease. It increased, okay? Nothing happened to this debt. It only got worse. Among the class of 2018, 69% of students took out student loans and they graduated with an average debt of 29,800, okay? $30,000, including both private and federal debt. 14% of their parents took out an average of 35,000 in federal parent plus loans. So the burden is applied to the children as well as the parents. They want to get them through school. They can't afford it, so they take on the loan. And of course, that puts a heavy burden on them. They're not going to be able to pay it back in short order, that's for sure. Look at some of the stats. You got $1.56 trillion in total U.S. student loan debt. 44.7 million Americans have student loan debt. I mean, that is excessive. You're looking at a vast majority of individuals today, not just young people, People, of course but all of these people 45 million of them have student loan debt and on average it tends to be thirty thousand dollars depending on when you're you know the stats you're looking at here but about thirty thousand dollars worth this is very interesting, 11.5% of student loans are 90 days or more delinquent or are in default. Average monthly student loan payment, $393 and median student loan payment, $222. This is a big chunk for individuals who aren't making money or are pushed right to the edge. This is not good for all of those other loans that they have taken out because they're going to have to default on those first. We've got an issue coming straight for us. I'm going to 
end the video there. If you found this informative, please give me a thumbs up. I think it's a big issue today that we have with student loans, with debt, and with the automobile industry that's going to be totally disrupted on all sides. You're not going to have steering wheels in the cars in the future. Think about that. That's insane. They're going to let the machines drive it around. It's not working out good so far. Maybe they'll get better as time goes on. Obviously, technology does get better, but it's worrisome right now. At the same time, all of these different companies are relying on people to buy more cars every single year, but the prices are so high as it is. This time around, individuals that are younger, maybe it's because of the debt, but for any reason whatsoever, it doesn't really matter in this case, we have seen they're not buying as many cars as the previous generation did. And of course, that means less sales. That means the stocks can't do well. That means more bailouts have to come around. You're going to have bankruptcies. Maybe the, you know, you're going to see the government have to come in and actually nationalize. Who knows? We'll see some mergers. We'll see some bankruptcies. It's going to be an interesting time ahead. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a thumbs up, you are supporting this channel. So I do appreciate that. Last but not least, if you want the financial education you weren't taught in school, these two books have everything you need and the foundation history, the asset classes, making money, all the details that you need are in these two books. Check them out at the link in the description. If you want the audio book that's available at themoneygps.com. There's a video that is interconnected with this. I highly recommend checking it out. If you click on it, I will see you there.